welcome to A Pinch of Basil, bringing the most entertaining guests, news stories, and with just a touch of comedy. Now here's everyone's favorite Greek, Basil. Oh, welcome to A Pinch of Basil. I'm Basil, your host. That's right. So glad you decided to join me again this week on A Pinch of Basil. And if you're joining me on Facebook, thank you so much. The only issue is we have not worked out some of the things that we want to do to simulcast everything the way that we had planned. So we're working our right, our producer, or rather I should say our engineer extraordinaire producer, Craig, <laughs> is going to go ahead and uh, he's working on a brand new computer that will actually handle being able to simulcast both the actual show itself and also the um I, I suppose trying to get you know to coordinate with Facebook. My I got my fans right now watching me live, but they can only hear me. They cannot hear my guests. And also, I, I'm hoping I was really hoping that they would hear my my co-hosts, uh, Jan Hermson and, and Jan. How Janice? How are you, honey? I am doing very well. How about you? I'm doing uh, as as best uh, as uh, yeah. I was going to say, are you are you ready to roll? Ready to get out of there? Uh, man, I, I ain't rolling. Uh, you know, I I wish I could say that I have control over what I do and say, but I don't. Um, oh. Yeah, I might be the man of the house, but um, <laughs> my, my my wife has well, she has the, she runs the place, so she whatever she wants to do is what we do. So if I'm not here next week, you'll know that the house has dropped on me, the flying monkeys came from all over, and someone stole my ruby slippers. There you so, go. I'm just letting you all know that's what happened right now. But uh, listen, thanks so much for joining me. Don't forget, you can always call in at 844-790-8255. That's 844-790-8255. And please, right now, do me a favor. If you want to hear this show, the podcast itself, now go go to americamatters.us. Okay? That's really important. americamatters.us. All right? You can listen to the entire show from there. If you're seeing me on Facebook, it's only me and you. So uh, we're, we're going through all of our hells here, and I can't believe I'm actually doing this. But you can also get us on the TuneIn app. TuneIn app. That's T-U-N-E-I-N app. Go ahead and get that. Yeah, app. Do I have that? Do I have to spell app for you people? Do I? I I'm just saying, do I have to spell app to you people? For some. For some. Yeah, for A-P-P. Okay, it's A-P-P. Yeah, all right, that's all I want to say. Okay. But, uh, but you can listen to me every week, every Tuesday. I love the Facebook thing, too, but, you know, I, I, t I want my guest to hear uh, to be part of that show, those who are watching me on Facebook, and then I want to go ahead and have them, you know, hear fantastic, and I do mean fantastic guests like we have tonight. Janice, I got to tell you, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, this gentleman who I've known for, God, over maybe 12 years, 10, 12 years, uh, Congressman, the Honorable Congressman Gus Bilirakis, he'll be with us from the 12th District in Florida near the Tampa area. He is simply, um, you know, simply the, one of the best cats in the world. And uh, I got a chance to see him. I did a show the other night. Uh, I was, I had a concert in Tampa, Florida. Thanks for the sellout crowd out there. A lot of fun to do that show. And um, it, 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 it was great. And we bring guests like that. We had Carlo Mira on here. We had Costa Cufos, the pre, you know, basketball player. We had, who else did we have, Janice? Because I don't have that whole thing. Oh, my goodness. We have had, we had our um, boxer, uh, yeah. Alan Santana. He was on. Unbelievable. Unbelievable guest. Alan Santana was yes. just an unbelievable guest. And also, don't forget Brian, about Brian. Brian Shirley. Brian Shirley. And I have to tell you, and I don't know if he's going to hate me for this, but um, he is in the hospital right now, so we <laughs> have to say a few prayers for him. What so, happened with Brian? Mm, what happened? A little heart attack, but it was not a little no! one. Yeah, oh. afraid so. So, yeah, he's probably going to be mad for me telling on the air, but I don't care. Well, let me tell you, he's a, cat, he's a cool cat. And listen, the guy's got a ton of pressure on him, you know, coming yeah. up with these books and everything. So, uh, for all those people listening, you know, you know I love you guys. I really do. Um, you know, we, we basically uh, broadcast uh, from our actual studios in Rio, Nevada. And I want to thank, again, to uh, Craig, our, 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 our extraordinary, unbelievable engineer. Boy, Craig, he's starting to get those hip boots on because it's getting thick. 
Is it getting thick? <laughs> it's okay. getting real thick. <laughs> well, he promised he's going to have that computer, and I am excited where I can then simulcast live with Facebook and also this wonderful podcast that we're doing. And, uh, you know, we're here, like I said, every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. New York City time. You can always find me online. Really, if you want to go to my website, it's great. BasilLive.com. B-A-S-I-L-E-L-I-V-E.com. Com. And all you can check me out on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Instagram at Basil Fans. That's B A S I L E F A N S. Check us out. You can always find us out there. In a few weeks, we'll be having some amazing guests. More, uh, I mean, just like like I said with Gus Bilarakis, he's really truly uh, an amazing. A uh, man who serves on the Veterans Affairs Committee and the Energy and Commerce Committees as well. So I, I, I got to tell you what, uh, that's just a, a phenomenal cat, and I just really dig him a lot. I really do. Yes. I don't know about you, Janice. I, I, you know, you know I, I do not know the gentleman, but I spoke to his office, and if his uh, chief of staff is any representative of who he right. is, uh, she was awesome. Yeah, Liz, Liz Quitos, yes. who's, uh, who might be Liz. And Liz, I love you, baby. You've been absolutely fantastic. She was but, wonderful uh, to work with. Yeah. But, you know, we're preparing for a terrible storm coming up, and, and I'm going to tell you all about that as we uh, get closer uh, to uh, our second segment uh, when we discuss things uh, as to what's going on because it is crazy out there. But uh, I just wanted to all you, thank you for all the Facebook messages, the personal messages, everything. I am okay. I'll survive this. Uh, I might lose all my homes. So, <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Okay. So Stuff anyway, happens, right? <laughs> yeah. But I'm in North Carolina. We're preparing, and right now you are listening to the best show in the whole wide world, A Pinch of Basil, right now. And uh, we're going to be back. We got these things called sponsors, and we have to run some of our little uh, commercials and stuff like that, so we can pay the bills, and they can pay me because I need the money to build rebuild my home. So anyway, listen. <laughs> Pretty soon. I love. Yeah, I love you all. We'll be right back after these messages. Peace. This is America Matters Media on AM 1180 KCKQ, a Lotus Broadcast Station, the power of radio since 1967. All righty then, we are back. That's right, it's a pinch of basil with your host, Basil. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank God my name wasn't Bob because uh, a pinch of Bob. Yeah, uh, Janice, that wouldn't work at all. <laughs> Unless, of course, we were in prison, and that's a completely different story. Mm, you know, we don't want to go there. No, not really, not at all. <laughs> but I got to tell you, it is good to be back. You're listening around the world. You can tune in. You can go to the TuneIn app. That's right, T-U-N-E-I-N radio app. Find America Matters online. Listen live every week at americamatters.us. You can hear us live. And if you miss any part of the show, you'll find them under podcasts, under the site, under A Pinch of Basil. Then look for today's date. And that'll be it, basically. But uh, I got to tell you, for those of you watching me on Facebook Live, I want to say, hey, thank you. And thanks for all the love you guys have been shedding me with all this hurricane nonsense. And, and Janice, what do you think about what's going on? I mean, you guys don't have hurricane issues, you, do you, in Reno? It's funny. No, we don't. And you know what's funny about that is I really was thinking about this this morning because I thought, you know, you guys get lots of warning. When we have an event happen, it's an earthquake. And we haven't had too many here in Reno, thank God. Not too devastating but when i was in the los angeles area i experienced two of them and the mm. second one did me in but there's no warning and yeah. not, i was deciding is that better or is that worse and i i couldn't decide but i think that that i prefer not to be warned <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't think but, i like it, your situation yeah you know i gotta I, I gotta say something i mean every time we see jim cantori uh, from the news uh, uh, st uh, network, when he comes into town, I really, you know, five grand, I can have someone whacked. I wouldn't mind putting together five grand because as soon as this guy walks in, <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> Something happens. So I'm like, hey, don't come. Don't Quit do us any here. favors. Stay away. And the, and the thing is, the guy is one of the sweetest guys in the world. I've actually played in a golf tournament with him uh, some years ago. And it, really a sweetheart of a guy. I really dig the guy. And But every time, it, you know, even my wife will sit there and go, you know, Jim Cantari's in town. 
that bastard. Okay, <laughs> all right. And my wife has a tough time blocking. She really does. And it was, I'm just telling you, that's about it. But she told me, and then I was like, you got to be kidding me. It's ridiculous. And of course, not only am I fighting that, I'm also fighting, um, you know, uh, you know, dealing with this thing. It's coming closer and closer. It's a category four, you know, sustained winds of over 110 miles an hour. It's pretty bad. And if it gets to a five, a cat five, well, you know, the devastation. I mean, yeah, one of the most devastating bad. hurricanes that have come through uh, was back, um, oh gosh, back in the 50s. And I'm trying to remember what uh, hurricane that was, but it was it was horrific. If any of you guys remember, let me know. The hurricane that came through in the 1950s that devastated this area. But you know what? Thank God the housing has gotten so much better built. Some of the trees that needed to look, um, you know, that needed to come down have come down. So a lot of the, you know, that stuff is gone. That's so good. now we're dealing, it's a different, it's a different ball of wax, but you know, not only that, but I gotta be honest with you, I'm also uh, having issues because it is nine 11 and it was one of the saddest days, um, in American history, uh, to see cowards go ahead and kill innocent life. Um, it, it, it very, very touching, uh, for me. I lost a couple of friends and acquaintances, I know um, you said you had someone who lost a very close friend as well. Yes, yeah. Um, he was actually on Flight 93, and my sister worked for him for many years when she lived in San Francisco. And, and it's it really does touch you very differently, um, I think, you know, under those circumstances. I, I, I don't know. It, it, yeah. it even makes me sad. I get goosebumps when I think about it because it's just such a... It's just such a sad thing, and and for yeah. no good reason, and you know, I, I don't know. It's hard. It's very difficult. You know, I, I got to be honest with you. It's one of those things that touched me. Um, again, losing a couple of people that I knew pretty well, and then uh, Boomer Esiason, um, a cat that I played uh, against uh, playing football. Uh, he was covering, I believe, uh, a, a game the night before on a Monday night game for CBS Sports and uh, wound up taking his crew out. Um, and their, you know, the crew's uh, office was in uh, the towers oh, and wow. uh, took him out for breakfast. And, man, wouldn't you know it, saved his life, saved their lives. Yeah. And it was pretty pretty unbelievable. And yeah. um, but Lots it, of know, stories I, like that, too. Uh, lots and lots of them. Terrible, terrible, terrible stories. And, and the way people's uh, you know life came to an end with that, that was just... Um, terribly tragic and you know it's kind of funny you always remember my mom always said i always remember where you know when the japanese wound up bombing pearl harbor and it's one of those things that you never forget where you were right. and i was in my kitchen i was packing it to go to houston and all of a sudden uh they said i was watching the today show and I said hey a plane just crashed in, in into the, one of the towers and i'm like sitting there thinking to myself well that's not the flight plan but i bet you someone from the teterboro airport uh with a small plane uh smashed in there had a heart attack or something smashed in there and I, but then when i looked at the flame and the immense amount of, of a hole, a gaping hole that it meant, I said, that's not a little private plane. No. Uh -uh. And next thing you know, I said, well, you know, this is ridiculous. This is terrible. A plane just, you know, we report a jet. And I said, a jet? What the hell's a jet doing there? there? And then, of course, the other jet came through. And then, of course, the, the jet that went down in the um, border of Pennsylvania and Ohio that went down. And, of course, the, the last jet that hit was basically hit the Pentagon. And um, my heart and and my heart goes out to all the people who have lost loved ones and how it affected all the families. I am so sorry for your loss. These people were heroes. And... Um, it's it's really a devastating thing to actually have something like that happen to us as a country. You know, we've done so much uh, for so many, and um, and to be treated like that by some zealots who, uh, you know, yeah. uh, you know, I, I don't care what you believe in, but there's no reason to take innocent life. There nope. really isn't. Nope. So that's just my opinion on that. I know it's tough. It's tough for all of us, right? Yeah, it is, and and I think that that yeah, I just think that that's a nationwide feeling I, I just can't imagine you know maybe i'm a pollyanna but i can't imagine anybody who who loves america that wouldn't feel the same way oh yeah you, you know, know and so. it, it, it's just it's just so sad and so for those of you who are who are basically uh listening right now that's why i'm so happy that our guest tonight um 
is a fantastic, fantastic guest, uh, Congressman Gus Villarakis. He'll be joining us in the bottom of the half of the hour. And, um, you know, he has helped so many veterans, and I have so much respect. I've never served a day in my life except at a restaurant when I was a waiter. You know what I'm saying? And I failed miserably at that job. Did you know when you serve plates to people, you know, the guests are at the restaurant. I don't know if you knew this, Janice. You're not supposed to pick off their plate and eat anything. Oh, no. You're kidding me. You, no, Is that why I, people you know, didn't leave me tips? I, that, you know, I I went tipless. You know, I don't want to say that. Yeah, I'm kind of embarrassed, but I, I went tipless. But uh, it was, uh, you know what? I, I thought you could eat after that. Well, who knew? Who knew? There was no regulations, no thing. Uh, no one told me a thing about it. I'll bet your job lasted all of a day. <laughs> um, actually, uh, three and a half hours. Ah, but the thing there you go. is, the thing is, I worked hard for that two <laughs> oh one an hour. That's right. I, yeah, that's right. So I walked away with about about seven dollars and six cents. Yes. You know, and I was proud of myself. Yes. You know, it was one of the longest jobs I had, uh, really, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. You know, I'd like to tell you about the time when I worked at Friendly's Ice Cream, but uh, that's a short story. Mm. Anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, man. And then for those of you who are listening, I'm actually looking over. I, I got, um, you know, I, I have people on, on my face, uh, on my face uh, book and uh, Basil Live. And you can always go there at B-A-S-I-L-E. L I V E, like us and uh, come and tell us what you think of this show. And I'm sorry, next week, according to Craig, we're going to have the ability to do that simulcast where oh, we can do Facebook. Oh, don't you speak for Craig. Don't uh, you no, speak for he Craig. Promise me. He promised me. <laughs> he promised me. And he knows. I know people, you know, with the crooked noses that talk like, hey, you're going to do this or what? You're from you know, Jersey? So, Hey, hey, you doing? How you doing? You doing all right? I'm doing good. But I want to let those people from, uh, you know, I'm doing a, a small, I'm going to be doing a, a part of a wedding. I'm going to be hosting a wedding, believe it or not. I'm so excited. In really? Australia. And then when I said, as soon as I said that, next thing you know, I had a couple of people offer me some shows and I'm coming to Australia. That, that's right. I'm going to Australia to do some shows. I'm Yay. very excited. And the date should have been out today. But they'll probably be out tomorrow. It's I think the venues are having some not so much issues, but they're putting the the actual shows together because I think we're going to have to add some more. I think um, so. I'm going to be a little bit busy, and uh, we got to figure out how the heck I'm going to do this podcast from there. For God's sake! I know. So, how long are you going to be gone? I'm going to be gone for about uh, ten. Oh God. 13 days oh. so yeah so i'm excited about that i really am and uh, you know it, it but i can't wait to report from there it's going to be a lot of fun yes hoo hoo, australia so uh, how many uh, hours difference is it from us we well, don't I have a lot like, of time uh, left oh, here but you yeah, can tell Mel, me that yeah, i know i think we got like 14 <laughs> uh there are about 14 hours ahead of us uh 14, sydney's 14. 17 right now okay sydney is did 17 we, did, so. we, did we ask you did we ask you <laughs> You just do your little button pushing, Craig, okay? I'm your <laughs> fact checker. <laughs> That's good. You can't get a computer to work for us, but we can check facts. Okay. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Stick that knife uh, in and turn. Yeah, you want to you wanna start with me? Okay. Listen, folks, we're getting close to that uh, end of our second segment. And I got to tell you, I'm so excited about our guest that we're going to be having on, Congressman Gus Bilirakis. For those people who are watching in Australia. And also, don't forget, next week I'm going to be in Port Jefferson. Woo! Port Jefferson. Woo Come on, check out my website, basillive.com. You can always find out where we're at. And then I'm going straight to London, Ontario, Canada on Saturday. It's going to be a lot of fun. So keep on watching, folks. You are now listening to the most important show with Jan Hermson myself. You are listening to A Pinch of Basil. Ugh, the best show on the world. Absolutely. Stay Absolutely. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after we hear from our sponsors. This is America Matters Media on AM 1180 KCKQ. A Lotus Broadcast Station. The power of radio since 1967. <laughs> We are 
right back with a pinch of basil. Don't forget, I am streaming this on Facebook, but you cannot hear me, or rather, you cannot hear my guests, unfortunately. So if you want to hear my guests, you got to go to the TuneIn app, but you can get that at americamatters.us. If you go to americamatters.us, you can hear our fantastic guest, Congresswoman Gus Bilirakis, who will be with us shortly. And if you want to come uh, and comment, you can always go to my Basil fans page on Facebook, and you have any questions, you can also give us a call at 844 790 Two five five, And right now, to be quite honest with you, I am so proud to introduce my next guest. It's a man who I've known for probably about, oh gosh, I want to say 10, 15 years. Um, he is uh, a tremendous representative that we have that, uh, for our House of Representatives in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, for the 12th, Florida's 12th Congressional District. He is a Republican from Palm Harbor, and he is serving his sixth term, the United States House of Representatives. Um, Congressman Gus Bilirakis, uh, let me tell you what he's done first before I even bring him on. He uh, serves on the Energy and Commerce Committee and is the vice chairman of the Veterans Affairs Committee. He is co-chairman of the Military Veterans Caucus, co-chairman of the Congressional Hellenic Caucus, and the Congressional Hellenic Israel Alliance. Thank you for being with us, my good friend, Congressman Gus Bilirakis. Gus, how are you? Good, very good, Basil. Thanks for having uh, me on the show. Are you kidding me? This has been, uh, I, I got a chance at, to see you uh, this past weekend. We wound up uh, doing a, um, uh, a benefit, and you and your lovely wife and your son came to the show. And uh, I just want to thank you so much for coming. And I'm so happy and I'm proud to have you, you know, have you on, on the show. I really am. Well, Basil, it really is an honor to be on the show. Uh, you're you're a great American and a great Helene, and uh, and uh, I tell you, you made our weekend with the show. We laughed so hard, and uh, you did a wonderful job. I know it comes from your heart. And uh, oh, again, you. anything I can do, please don't ever hesitate. We're uh, you're a great friend, and, and again, you're a patriot. Oh, uh, thank you, Gus. I told you it's real simple. I just need a couple of evenings, maybe a weekend at the Lincoln Bedroom. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> You know, that's, I'm not really asking a lot, Gus. I mean, uh, I, I, these are the little things I ask for, and you know, I, I got to be honest with you. But <laughs> that's good. Yeah, we, I know you told me so that when you become president, I said, Basil, Basil. Yeah, I can guarantee you, if I become president, you can sleep in the Lincoln bedroom. <laughs> So, all right, when do we start sorry, running? When do we, when do we start running? That's all I'm asking. When do we start running uh, to, for the presidency? My wife and I would like to spend, yes. you know, I really would like to actually go down, like I do in my home, in my underwear, go go to the kitchen about 3 o'clock in the morning, and just, you know, that would be cool to do that in the White House, don't you think? I think it would be great. <laughs> yeah, I've never experienced that, Basil, but, uh, yeah, if I run for president, you could be my running mate, and, uh, yeah, absolutely. We can uh, we can have poker poker games in the middle of the night. Yeah. I don't have a problem with any of this, Gus. I really don't. <laughs> but let me tell let me tell my listeners and those who are uh, watching right now on Facebook. Um, I want to know these are some of the Bill of Rackets bills that became law in the 115th Congress. You put together the Veterans Act, the Community Care Act, the Chip Buy-in Program, the Civil and Criminal Penalties Update Act, uh, increased security. Security measures at Visa security posts, the Shut Act, um, other things, the remove cap on therapy and Medicare, and the Space A. But before, because I want to get to those two, but here are some of the ones that some of the other bills right now that are uh, have passed the House, and you have the Flood Insurance Integrity Act, which is thank God because I got to tell you, my my house might be missing <laughs> shortly and be flooded by this hurricane that's coming my way. Well, you had the acts. Oh, thank you, my friend. Thank you so much. The Access Act, the Congressional Heart Failures, which is going to, I'm going to have Congressional Heart Failures after. after and and we stuff. have to correct you, Basil, because that's the Congenital Heart Futures Reauthorization oh. Act. I thought that was the Congressional Heart Failures. I know. You're, you're giving him heart failure. 
<laughs> oh my god oh I, i'm so sorry you may have lost a couple of voters on that one <laughs> no um the sit rep act uh you had the access to quality sober and living act safe tech that gus you have done so much but the one thing i i think janice and i were discussing this was um the, the remove cap on therapy and medicare and can you give me a little bit of yeah. breakdown on that yeah that that's big for our seniors basil uh, well, if you know, let's say, God forbid, one of our seniors, this has to do with Medicare the reimbursement. Let's say one of our seniors uh, breaks their hip or uh, needs a knee replacement, is a good example. Uh, you know, you have to have physical therapy to get back on your feet, really. And, mm-hmm. uh, and then before this law was passed, before this bill was passed, and uh, it was a two thousand dollar cap on therapy, so Medicare would pay up to two thousand dollars for therapy. That's not enough, and a lot of our seniors are on limited incomes, and it's very difficult for them to go over that two thousand dollar level to pay out of pocket. Mm-hmm. But this way, the cap is removed, and and they can get the therapy that they need to get back on their feet. So it's a big deal. We've been working on it for a few years, and I'm just happy that the Senate passed it this year. Oh, that's fantastic. I, I got to tell you, you know, ha- being a, a son of two elderly parents, um, you know, unfortunately, my parents have passed away. But I'll tell you what, it, it was very difficult. And we need to protect our senior citizens as much as possible to go ahead and do that. And I, I think it's great. Janice, you have any questions on this, sweetheart? Well, I, I want to say that, that um, my husband actually has a chronic illness, and it's helped him as well so um thanks for that that's that's awesome it's something that uh yeah. I, I was wondering well, why he then, suddenly got know, therapy <laughs> yeah you know the thing is that, that my bills aren't sexy bills heck i'm not sexy my wife says my wife says i'm are not you, sexy but your they, wife they is wrong fast, Gus. your wife is fast. wrong you are one of the sexiest men i know oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! We don't, don't want to go there, guys. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, what I wanted to say is that uh, yeah, th- these aren't <laughs> these aren't bills, high profile bills. Let me use that term. Uh, <laughs> but they get they get the, they affect the average person. They affect our constituents, and uh, and uh, you know I work really hard on it. And you have to form relationships in Congress. Uh, with with in a bipartisan relationship, Democrats and Republicans, and, and find common ground. Uh, and I have a reputation of working, uh, you know, with both parties, and and getting things done for for my constituents, uh, for Floridians, and for Americans, and also for, I guess, Basil, you're from uh, you're you're a North Carolinian, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Even though you're from Cleveland so, originally, right? Can Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Um, sure. So Absolutely. you're you're talking about the fact that you work in a bipartisan way. Does that happen more often than what we hear as you know the average American out here yes. listening? Does that happen more often than what we yes. think it does? Because it feels horrible. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it feels awful. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> particularly, particularly in the energy uh, energy and commerce committee, this committee I serve on. Uh, and 60% of the legislation on the floor of the House comes from the Energy and Commerce Committee uh, and also on the Veterans Committee. We work in a bipartisan fashion for our true American heroes. Our veterans have always been my top priority in Congress. So, yeah, Janice, it does happen. It's just not uh, something uh, that the, the, the media likes to write about. Right, right. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, that's and, good to uh, hear because yeah, it's, yeah, it so just was, doesn't feel very good out here listening, and it feels like there's nothing going on that's good. Well, I'll tell you well, what. Um, I mean, it, don't get me wrong. It could be. It could be better. It could be <laughs> the climate could be much better. Right. Uh, right. And it takes leadership from both sides. But it does happen. And uh, you know, I, I I'm kind of a, a problem solver. And uh, and you know, we're first of all we're American. Uh, we're Americans first, and then we're Republicans or Democrats. Absolutely. And, and that's the way it, it should be. I think that's what our yep. founders intended. I agree with you. 
Yeah, I do too. And I got to tell you, and I want all the people listening, you're listening to the uh, Pinch of Basil podcast, and I have uh, con- Congressman Gus Bilirakis from the 12th District of Florida, right in the Tampa area. Gus, c- real quickly, before we go to our next segment, can you talk about the Community Care Act? Yes, sir. I mean, who uses these services, and why are they important? Because I think that's something that people need to know. Yeah, I think this is the the one you're referring to is the uh, the Community Health Centers uh, Act, I believe so. And that is the, the one, you know, the, the community health centers throughout the United States, they're wonderful. Actually, my father, Congressman Michael Arrakis, was one of the original authors. Uh, they're clinics, health care clinics. Uh, and, and people can go in there uh, for primary care. Uh, you know, some have dental care. Some have uh, mental health care and substance abuse. We're trying to bring in more substance abuse dollars uh, to the clinics, but uh, they uh, they take Medicaid, Medicare for payment. Uh, if you're underinsured, yeah, you can pay the difference. Uh, so it's a sliding scale payment, uh, and, and it's not very much. Uh, even if you have insurance, you can go in. And hmm. uh, it's a walk-in clinic, and uh, these are, are, are excellent physicians uh, and, and health care providers. They even have a pharmacy in some of the clinics. Uh, and, you know, this is part of the solution to our health care crisis. And I'm trying to get, uh, uh, through another piece of legislation, to get the veterans qualified for, for the clinic as well so they can get, in other words, the VA would pay the, uh, the clinic directly if the veteran chooses because uh, it could be closer to their home, more convenient for them. Uh, to go to the uh, community health center as opposed to a VA hospital or a, a clinic. That's a great idea. Huh. I like that idea. Yeah, me too. That's you know. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's a good idea. We have to. Yeah, this, common sense. You know, common sense yes. ideas. Yes, yes, absolutely. Some brainers don't get through Congress, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. No, that's a that's awesome. As somebody who has to take VA care for my husband, it's yeah, it'd be nice to have a choice. No, absolutely. You have no, no yeah, idea. Yeah, that's, that's what I think, too, uh, Janice. I, I love the VA. Yes. Uh, and and uh, we want to build on the VA. I mean, I I got some funding for a new bed tower in Tampa recently, and we're expanding the, the VA clinic in, in Pasco County uh, and consolidating the services. But, hey, Gus, you know, the best Gus, before, Gus, before we go any further with that, because I want to hear more about this, but we are right now close to the end of that time where i got to pay some bills. We'll be right back with Congressman Gus Bilirakis on A Pinch okay. of Basil. Sounds good. Oh, I am so glad you can join us for A Pinch of Basil. I'm here with my guest. Uh, i tell you what, as someone I've known for a bunch of years, Florida Congressman from the 12th District, Gus Pilarakis, and I and I got to tell you, Gus, we were talking off off la- the air, and I, 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 you know, the things, and I interrupted you, and I'm sorry, I want to shoot my sponsors, but I'm, I'm forced no, sometimes I'm to have no more problem choice. At all. <laughs> but I want you, can you do me a favor and actually finish uh, the the rest of that information that we were discussing, because I think people need to know that who are listening right now on the podcast, if you can finish up, because I think that was an important uh, a, a piece of legislation that you were helping put through. Yeah, Basil, uh, well, in general, again, these are the community health centers, and I reauthorized them for another two years, and we're putting more money in there, and it's a bipartisan piece of legislation that passed the House and the Senate. Uh, and, uh, you know, they really perform a great service. Uh, but I also want to tell you about the VA, uh, and this is a bill that was passed, not just by me, but the entire committee, the VA committee, uh, called the, the Mission Act. And what we're doing is uh, we're striving to give the veterans a choice. If they'd like to go to the VA, if the VA is close by, whether it's a hospital or a clinic, a VA clinic, they'll have that opportunity still, of course. Mm -hmm. However, if they feel like they want to go into the community, maybe they have a private position that they favor, uh, they should have the opportunity to do so. And and the decision will be made between the veteran and and his or her VA doctor. And and we'll consider the fact that uh, they may have to wait too long to get uh, care. Uh, or maybe the care is not provided at that particular VA, 
uh, or they have to drive too far. Uh, so, you know, uh, I, I feel personally that, again, we got to keep the VA going, and they do Absolutely. wonderful things. But I feel personally that the veteran should have a choice. Whatever is more convenient for the veteran, uh, if he or she thinks he can get better quality care in the community, he or she should have that right. I mean, there are heroes. And Absolutely. Uh, we need to, to take care of them. And is can is this relate to the Space A bill that was passed? Well, the Space A bill, and I understand that Pat may be on the line or yep. get on the line. He yeah. is on but the line. The Space A. Oh, he is. Okay. Well, Pat can probably describe it really well. But this is a good example of how a constituent. This is how Congress is supposed to work. A constituent came to me, Pat, and uh, and had an idea. Uh, and uh, and I thought it was a great idea, and the cost was very minimal, if any at all, really. Uh, and we've been pushing uh, the Space A, and I'll describe it. Uh, for it, The House has passed it like three or four years in a row, but we're having difficulty getting the Senate to pass the bill. But it, what it does, it's very simple, um, but it's a great idea, and Pat came up with it, uh, as, as well as others. Uh, other heroes, but what it does is that it allows the veteran who is 100% disabled uh, to travel on a military aircraft at no cost if there is space available. And, uh, you know, it sounds like a no-brainer, but, again, we had difficulties with the Senate uh, for the last couple of years. They're, you know, they're too small. Very very I've got those nine bills sitting in the, in the Senate. Uh, they, they could pass them all if they if they worked harder. Now, don't want to get me wrong. We have some really good senators too, but uh, sometimes the process is, is uh, very slow. I know it's supposed to be the deliberative body, and we're supposed to be the uh, the radicals in the House. This is what the founders intended, uh, but. Uh, it's not always the case. Uh, <laughs> they deliberate but, a little much, huh? Case, yeah, they deliberate a little <laughs> too much. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, we're making progress with them. And, uh, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of good things with the president. But uh, I, I do want to talk about that if you have time. But, however, uh, I want to give Pat an opportunity, too. But you're the oh, boss. Yeah. Basil, you're the boss. Jen's the boss. So <laughs> well, I'm just being I guess. As you said, I, I got to tell Gus, uh, you know, we have two veterans with us right now. One of them, like you said, is uh, Patrick Ganeri, who's with us. And we have R.G. Smith, who happens to be in the studio as well in Reno. And, um, you know, wow. I got and, and like I'm, I'm really excited to, to actually have a couple of guests because we've never had guests in studio before. And uh, Janice, let's introduce our guests. Yes, we have in studio with me is R.G. Smith. Welcome, R.G. Hi, Janice. Thank you for having me here. Yeah. Thank well, you for your service. Thank you for your service, R.G. Oh, no, thank you, too, also, Congressman. Um, it's a great honor to be on here with you, actually. And then we have Patrick. But the honor is mine. <laughs> we have Patrick Gernary on the phone. Um, he's calling in from Florida. Welcome, Patrick. Yep. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank Hi, you for Gus. Your service, Patrick. How are you? Yeah. You guys. Oh, doing you well. Doing show. well. Starting to starting he's to develop incredible. some more projects. We'll be talking Bezo, about Bezo soon. Is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let me add, uh, uh, Patrick. Uh, tell us a little bit about about this uh, this program that you've been involved with, uh, Congressman Bill Arrakis. Well, back back oh, a dozen or so years ago, they tried to pass something that was a, a weaker version of the bill, and uh, Congressman and I were at uh, I, I don't know if it was a fundraiser, or a political event. In, in Pasco County in the district, and uh, yeah, I approached Gus and ran the idea by him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and uh, I said, you know, this isn't going to cost the taxpayers a dime. And he snapped his head at me. He says, it won't cost anything. He says, you call my <laughs> office on Monday, and let's get started on it. And without him and his staff, um, uh, we just made a, a great team, um, executing strategy, um, 
surprisingly, the Senate held it up for uh, a few different Congresses. And interesting enough, John McCain wasn't a big proponent of it. Um, but uh, eventually it, it came through, and we had people like R.G. come on board and were real powerhouses. And in combination with Gus guiding us, it, it happened. Gus has done this so many times, and you know more so than other members of Congress. He's just committed his heart his mind, his efforts uh, toward helping veterans, and we can't thank him enough for it. It would not have happened without him. Yeah, I think that's fair. Do you want to say anything more to to you want to say anything more to the congressman? Yeah, actually, um, you know, the way that uh, Project, I want to mention Project Patriot because I think that was a a kind of a brainchild of mine and uh, Pat's uh, to help us push us across the finish line, but um, I was introduced to Pat from um, uh, a person from the National Federation of the Blind, and me and Pat talked, and Pat's like, I've, I've been writing letters to Congress, members of Congress, since 2012 to get this, p- because it's a no-brainer, there's no cost. And uh, this time when I talked to Pat, we got our heads together, and Pat says, hey, instead of doing letters, RG, why don't you make some phone calls? <laughs> and I don't really like making phone calls. So, But I started doing that, and what I found out was uh, when you talk to staff members, they'll say, uh, what, what's your name and what organization are you with? And when you say, well, I'm RG Smith, and I'm just calling on my own, you don't get a lot of weight. So I came up with the idea uh, and ran across Pat about Project Patriot, and that's how Project Patriot was a seed and became um, reality. And we, we, I figured that we needed a website because Congress might look and say, hey, let's find out more about this Project Patriot, and then they can't find <laughs> out anything. So it's that's, like being in the Yellow Pages, right, R.G.? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and then um, I yeah. knew Janice from several years ago, and I approached her about uh, sponsoring what we're doing and uh, she jumped in with both feet and, and said she's in, and here we are today. Yes, and it's awesome. It's really awesome. So we thank you, yeah. Congressman Bilirakis. We really do. It's much appreciated. Oh, my pleasure, Jan. And, yep. and for the callers, too, uh, also uh, for R.G. Smith and, and Patrick, thank you all so much for not only your service, but it, it's good to actually get, you know, some – Gus, I, I'm the first one to tell you. When I think there's something wrong, I'll be the first one to say there's something wrong. But I also give compliments when compliments are are, are needed. And, you know, my friend, I'm not commenting because you are my friend. I'm commenting because the service that you do representing these veterans, representing their families, and the entire con- – you know, 12th congressional district in Tampa, you do a great, you're so loved. And, 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 you know, I, I really, my hat's off to you, um, for everything that you do for this crazy political thing we got going on right now. Um, and, and my God, I'll tell you what, I don't know how the hell you do it, but you do, and you do it with, with, with panache and, and also, um, uh, you're a gentleman and, and that's what I love. It's not this, this thing going back and forth uh, with hatred and, and distaste. Well, I have, yeah, I have I, to tell you, this is I, Patrick I really again, that uh, the likability factor is, is uh, the likability factor in, in Florida for Gus Belarakis is off the charts on both sides of the aisle, whether you're Republican or Democrat. He, he's done so much. He's just a humble person that uh, works so hard and People recognize it, and uh, it's his attitude and character that shine through that That's makes awesome. all the difference in the That's world. That's really for us. great. Absolutely, yeah. Gus. I want to thank you very, very, very much for coming on the show. We got to close it up pretty soon, but Anytime. I want to tell all the people that listen again. Congressman Gus Bilirakis, a fantastic individual, a gentleman, and a man for our veterans. And Gus, thank you so much for coming on to the show. And a reminder to all the people listening every week. On on Tuesdays from 6 to 7, New York City time, that's East Coast time. We can be heard around the world on americamatters.us. If you're using the TuneIn app for the radio, oh my God, make sure you get us. Come on, America Matters, be sure to keep it as one of your favorites. Questions and comments, go to Basil Fans, B-A-S-I-L-E-F-A-N-S, and drop me a line and um, give me a call, 844 790 Thanks, Congressman. Thanks, so Thanks, guys. God bless us. Thank you so thank, much. Thank you, Dan. God bless you. Thank you. 